Hey, Dan here at Sweet Maria's. Uh, roasting some coffee on the bullet right now and wanted to throw together a really quick uh, roast profile for the new classic espresso blend. This is another of our long-standing espresso blends here at Sweet Maria's. Um, it's sort of a take on a classic bittersweet espresso profile, but without Robusta. Uh, it's typically uh, made up of dry processed Brazil and a pair of wet processed Latin American coffees. Right now they're both Central American coffees. The idea is to have some really great coffee that um, you can develop a nice uh, undercurrent of sweetness with while also pulling out those uh, rich chocolatey bittersweet tones um, that we love in a dark roasted espresso. We roasted some of this blend when putting together our roast profile for the Espresso Monkey blend. Perhaps you saw uh, our last Bullet Roast Profile video. And we were really impressed with just how delicious this blend is tasting right now in its current configuration and prompted us to uh, put together this quick roast profile. I plan to follow a similar profile as Espresso Monkey, um, but I want to try to extend that latter stage of development uh, in order to take the roast right up to the beginnings of Second Crack. Uh, if you look at that profile that we have published for Espresso Monkey, you'll see that I was probably close to 10, de 10 degrees away from hitting second snaps, which is not what I was shooting for. It was still amazing, um, but I want to really get this up right to the beginnings of second crack, and I'm hopefully going to hear some of those in the cooling tray. I preheat to 401. Uh, my default start settings are P8 um, and F2 and the drum speed to 7. And I'm gonna just slowly pull back on heat as I edge towards first crack and increase the fan speed to start pulling off that chaff as well and slowing things down. I will probably uh, wind up down around P5 towards the end uh, with my fan setting around six or seven. And I'm hoping to hit first crack, you know, seven or eight minutes and finishing by 11 minutes. That's my goal. So uh, I'm gonna get back to my warm up batch here and we'll see how this goes. We're, we're just hitting four minutes and yellowing is underway. I already uh, tracked that on the roast graph. This is progressing just as I'd hoped. Overall, this roast is tracking a little behind uh, the, the monkey profile that we put together. I am making much smaller adjustments here. I didn't uh, drop my temperature until minute five and I'm just barely uh, bringing up the fan speed. Beans are starting to look tan, which is great. We just hit first crack at nine minutes. Definitely going slower than I had hoped, but I think it's totally fine. Um, looking forward to tasting it. I, I have not made any adjustments since dropping the heat to P7 other than upping the fan speed to F5. So I'm just gonna let it ride from here on through to the beginnings of second snap. The roast is done and now the roaster is cooling. You can see a bit of smoke in my room here. Um, overall it chugged along a little slower than I anticipated but my overall roast time uh, still clocked in at just under 12 and a half minutes. First crack was at nine minutes. Actually I think some of the less dense coffee, probably Brazil, started to pop a little earlier than the rest. So I, I heard a few snaps at 380 and that's where I marked first crack. I generally uh, hit first crack on this machine around 385, which is when I started to hear the, the, the bulk of the coffee start snapping, like a nice rolling first crack. And that sort of threw off my numbers for, for development time. It looks like I developed the coffee at just about 50 degrees, but I think it was probably um, a little less than that um, based on uh, uh, what I mentioned. Um, my weight loss was 15.8%. So a really nice Full City Plus, and I'm looking forward to tasting this coffee um, after a couple days rest. All right, we're back. I've uh, let this roast rest 48 hours, and so now um, I finally get to try my roast of the new Classic Espresso blend. Just judging the roast color, uh, I think that the, the coffee looks really even. I did see a couple 
partial Quakers in the roast, but um, nothing egregious at all. It looks really nice to me. Uh, the roast color looked a little more like Full City to me, but I know that there's about 16% moisture loss here. So this is definitely a Full City Plus roast. Plus I had some second snaps in the tray. I often find that grinding the coffee gives a more accurate representation of roast degree. And so here I have it sitting next to a City Plus roast of a Guatemalan coffee. That's on the right here, and the left is my new classic roast. I'm excited to give this one a taste, so let's uh, run it through the espresso machine. I'll go ahead and weigh out 18 grams here, but that actually overdoses my single basket here a little bit. I wind up scraping off about a gram or two. Um, I'm shooting for about 18 grams out. I like a nice short shot, and let's roll. It's really nice. I really like the way that this uh, blend is tasting at this roast level. Um, there's a really nice sweetness that's supporting the bittering roast tones and um, really helps balance out the flavor profiles. Um, it has a ton of chocolate, especially at this Full City Plus roast level. The, the, that sort of real bittersweet chocolate flavor is going to bode well for uh, milk drinks. It'll definitely punch up through steamed milk. Um, but I also get a little bit of fruit in there, um, just like some dark fruit hints. And um, I'm getting some whole spice notes in the aroma, reminding me of like whole anise, um, a sort of aromatic black licorice note um, that uh, impacted the aroma and the aftertaste. It was just really nice, um, subtle complexity. I, I actually found myself going back and updating the review with some of these subtle differences that inevitably come from introducing new ingredients to these blends. When we make changes to any of our blends, we have a flavor profile in mind that we're trying to hit. And I think we do a really good job of tracking um, throughout the year as different ingredients become available. But when you introduce new uh, ingredients, you're invariably introducing um, new flavors as well. So while we are able to have some consistency in sort of the, 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 the base flavors of our blends, there's definitely going to be some subtle changes that we try to make sure we go back and note in our reviews. I hope you found this roast profile useful. Uh, we link to the roast graph in the comments below. There's a link to our Roast World profile where you can check out um, our roast of the new classic and the previous one of Monkey and a few others. Um, so be sure to check that out. And thanks for watching.